Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that I'm going to be looking into today is the murder of Teresa Hibbers and she was actually a doctor and her murder was well you, you'll see yeah when we get into it. This was a suggested case by one of you guys, you guys so thank you for that. I appreciate any suggestions you guys have and of course if you have any more please do let me know via comment via email however you like. Teresa was a doctor from Bonita Springs in Florida. She was very well known um, and she ran her practice with her husband, who was also a doctor, called Mark Shibbers. She went to high school in Connecticut. She got a valedictorian there. She was a very intelligent woman. She went on to go to medical school because she knew exactly what she wanted to do, which was become a doctor, which she actually ended up doing, which is amazing. And she graduated from there in 1996. She then went on and did her residence, residence, residency. Why can I not speak in Florida? She was a lovely woman, was said that, you know, she was a genuinely kind, genuine and very kind hearted, would do anything for anyone basically. And, you know, that's a good trait in a doctor, obviously. She, of course, met Mark, who I've already told you about. She'd been with him for. 12 years they got you know they got married they hit it off they had kids together started their family together and everything was just really going really well for them i believe it was two children they ended up having together she actually ended up becoming a holistic medical physician which is something i didn't actually mention before there you go mac would um take care of things in the office and things like that and she would go on to do that side of things also of course he would help out with the children at home perfect husband right maybe not now we're going to june of 2015 Teresa and mark and the two kids they have this family visit plan to go and visit relatives and off they go on this trip they have a really good time but Teresa actually decided that she wanted to come back a bit earlier because she had patients to see and she was very dedicated to her work and she was like i said a really caring person and so she decided to cut the holiday short or at least this is what has been said to go home for that this was Sunday the 28th of June and she was seen heading through the airport on the cameras and things, um, you know, ready to leave to go home. But despite getting home early and going home early for work, you expect her to be in work Monday morning, right? Right, well, she didn't turn up. So obviously everyone knew something was wrong straight away. It wasn't like Teresa at all to not turn up to work. And that was the whole reason she left early. Well, apparently. So Mark heard about this and so he asked for a friend who was a doctor to go and visit the house and see why, you know, what was up, why was Teresa not in work? And so this friend did and they came across a horrific scene. Teresa was found on the kitchen floor. She had been murdered, basically bludgeoned to death with a hammer. And that very same hammer had been left beside her body. Of course the police launched a full investigation and of course they told Mark who was still away at this time and apparently his behaviour basically put a lot of suspicion on Mark with the police and he did become a suspect in his wife's murder. Well at the very least, <clears throat> excuse me, at the very least a person of interest. But, you know, Mark was cooperating fully with Omar, so it seemed like, you know, he seemed like he didn't have anything to hide. And of course, he wasn't even in the area when Teresa was killed because he was still away and she'd come home earlier. So they looked into it further. Who could have done this to Teresa? Who would have wanted to do this to Teresa? They found out that Mark's mother had actually been around to feed the pets whilst they had been gone and she had been having some trouble with the alarm code and so... Mark told her to just leave it off because he was worried that the dogs would set it off and things like that. I believe they had motion sensors or something. So, you know, he was worried about that. So he told her to leave that off. And, you know, they were just really looking into everything. Obviously, if there's no alarm on, then the person that broke into the house or whatever, at the time, it wouldn't have set off anything because it was nothing set. So that was um, frustrating. They looked into it for months, trying to find every lead that they could. And then two months after her murder, they did actually arrest two people. 
Jimmy Rogers and Curtis Lane, and these men were from Missouri. And Curtis Lane was actually a very good friend of Mark's. He was, you know, they'd known each other for years and they were pretty close. And not only that, this Jimmy Rogers also had the nickname of the Hammer, which, guess what Teresa was killed with? Yeah, a hammer. Um, you know, they were, became suspects in the case and then they were arrested. I believe Jimmy had a girlfriend at the time and he like gave her an alibi and cooperated with the police and basically said that he wasn't anywhere near it. Well, that he had nothing to do with a murder, basically. They also found some strange things on Mark's phone. He had some, made some phone calls to a phone which actually turned out to be a burner phone. So this is getting more and more suspicious. Now, they somehow got this GPS that this cat, this GPS of this car that Jimmy had used. They followed that and it led, why did it lead them a trail? They found that the pair actually arrived at Teresa's and Mark's home at 6 a.m. They had gone to Walmart and that's where they were buying bin bags, flushable wipes, lock picking kit. And it, obviously that just doesn't look good for anyone. They then went to Mark's and Teresa's home and they waited. Curtis would then later confess to police that he went to Florida to make some money and basically kill Teresa because, you know, Mark was actually the one that put the hit on her. Go figure. The person that you trust the most, you've been married to for 12 years, have two children with mind, shared your entire life together, puts a hit on you and gets somebody to kill you. It's absolutely horrific. They were obviously wondering what the motive was behind it because they'd been together like for so long and whatnot. It didn't seem like there was any issues on the surface. And so I believe the friend didn't really want to say anything about it. But the police did find out that there was actually a financial strain on the couple. Also, their marriage was strained too. But one thing Teresa had done is taken out a life insurance policy. And that was for a hell of a lot of money. Four million dollars to be in to be exact. And so Mark would receive all of that. So ding, 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 there's your motive straight away. He's having financial difficulties, he's not very happy in his marriage. His wife is worth $4 million. Let's hire someone's killer. Of course, that's the obvious thing that you do. Not. In the end, Curtis started blabbing. He got a plea deal. And for his part in it, he was sentenced to 25 years. Mark professed his not guiltiness and he actually pled not guilty. He was found guilty and he got the death penalty for that. He still pled that he was innocent and still says that he is, I believe. And Jimmy Rogers was found guilty of second degree murder and he was sentenced to life in prison. I believe they did it, it was said that they did it between them kind of thing. Like one did one bit and one did the other, I guess. But what happened to Teresa is just horrific. People see money like that and they just, I don't know. It, it, I guess it does something to you. But I mean, he's in jail now and they all are. So well done guys. Stealing somebody's life away, stealing your own wife, your children's mother away, just friend, daughter, she was everyone to everyone and a lovely person and they just took it all away just for money. Well, I mean, it, it, a lot of money obviously, but still, it's just ridiculous and absurd and nobody has that right over anyone and it's really sad that her life was lost. But yeah, that is the end of the case. If you guys have enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content. Anyway, that's all I have today on the case of Teresa Sivers. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.